You're in the field, and I'm Derek Brew. So, more deer damage permit hunting. I don't know, we should come up with a more clever name than that, shouldn't we? Deer hunting in summertime. And I've been employing some unusual tactics because that's what I've been wanting to try. I've been, I've been wanting to use this kind of like an experiment of what... Say hello to everyone. This is Ogden, my wife's cat, but I love him too. I can whistle and he'll come to me like a dog. He's not as much fun as Beulah. You didn't hear that though. Producer. <laughs> so I've been using this time period kind of as a test for a lot of strategies that I've wanted to try for a long time. I've tried some unusual strategies that I've kind of done before. Stand placement was one of them. I had a lot of trouble picking a good, I wanted a field edge stand, but I didn't want to have to trim, you know, a mile along the edge to get a shot because my best shots were not out in the beans. As you saw from the previous episode, I had a terrible time getting good shots at the vitals once they got into the beans that were tall enough to, to obstruct their vitals. So I, uh, I wanted to get up in the air in a tree stand to get a better downward angle and I wanted to be able to see the deer on the lane between the woods and the bedding and beans, the food. I am parked right there. It's kind of down in the hole. We'll see how it goes. If a deer smells me, hopefully they see the truck and not me. It was literally on top of the bumper, which turned out not to be a bad thing anyway. I mean, it was super easy to get to. I literally drove, parked my truck next to the bumper and set up the tree stand and hunted it right there. I didn't, didn't even have to hike. I mean, it was like hop out of the truck, hop onto tree stand. Still can't see down the lane that way much. But over here, I can see down the lane good. Because I trimmed, find my branch here. I wish I could have trimmed this branch just a little more. It's hard to see it in the camera. The scope doesn't give it justice, but when I'm standing up, that branch right there is in the way. But I still have some shooting lanes all the way down there. So Lord willing, we get some does. Down and in the cooler. Don't worry. I don't plan on shooting.
much in the way. Just can't make a good shot. spot and drop. My tree stand is in yep that tree right there. She ran and fell right in my blind spot. There's a branch right right here where I can't see. But it's my kind of track job. I don't have to go I don't, that might be 15 yards, maybe. But I'll probably cut her up here and then, then try and drag the scraps that I don't use into the brush. I think I'll knock down fewer beans that way. And that was one of the tactics that I wanted to try. And it was funny because this whole trip, I had a lot of pedestrian traffic, just the summertime in general. You get people using the property that have permission to use the property and they, they've been notified that I'm hunting, but they forget, or for whatever reason, they're out there. So a guy comes back, he must have seen my tracks, and just wanted to make sure that nobody was back there messing things up. You know, good neighborly thing that a lot of guys do, and I, I applaud him for it. I don't fault him at all for coming back and making sure everything was all right, but it's funny because you see him pull back and you spot my truck and unfortunately I wish I had the cameras rolling you could see it you could just you could just see both the surprise once he saw where my tree stand was and the disdain that he thought that was the stupidest place to hang but that's my perception of what ha happened if you're watching this <laughs> and you're the dude that did it <laughs> you might have a much different take on it so I don't want to talk bad about you at all it's just the way you looked at me when you saw me in the tree, right above the pumper, right above where I parked, it was funny. And I actually think you showing up actually helped the hunt. The deer are pretty acutely aware when a truck goes by. They aren't usually bothered, but when you, or he, this guy, pulled in and then pulled back out, not 10 minutes after you left, a deer came out. Uh, I'm thinking that deer may have been waiting for me to leave for it to come out. And when you came in and drove off, that deer thought that I had left. Now it came out and looked right at my truck and didn't care, which is what I anticipated them doing. Now, deer in the big woods might respond differently to seeing a truck or a vehicle, but deer in farm country that I hunt do not care about vehicles being present. They simply don't. And in fact, if you put it I, I actually take this into account and use it as an advantage. If the deer are looking at my truck, they're not looking at me. And if the deer are looking at my truck and don't care, that means they aren't looking at me and I don't care. So when he steps out, it, it, was, it was a tactic that I, I'm glad I employed. I, it, it panned out, parking right there, the deer looked at the truck, not me. The pumper had no effect on them. They're used to the pumper. They're used to the pump activity. They're used to people coming and going from there. And I got, I believe I got two woodchucks from that spot and two deer. So I was, I was pretty happy.
My other tactic was I'd go lay in a pivot track or a sprayer track or an already matted down area of beans. I'd find an open area of beans where I had seen deer before and I would just go lay there. And the problem I had was is you couldn't just sit there and keep an eye out looking around the whole time because your head sticks out of the beans and you stick out like a sore thumb doing this all day waiting for the deer to show up. So the tactic I had to use was is I lay down. I would literally take a nap, 20, 30 minute nap, <laughs> but as it got closer to prime time hunting, I would pop up a little more often. So I'd start out every hour and I'd go to every half hour and then I'd go to every 15 minutes and then I'd go to every five minutes, right at the key time. But the point was is I would, I would lay down the beans completely invisible and then I would get my gun all ready to go, get everything loaded, cameras rolling, and I would pop up and look. And I'd look, wouldn't see anything most of the time. And then I'd go back down and wait again. So start the timer over again and then pop up again and look. And that's how I, that's how I use this tactic and it worked pretty good. It's a long shot. Could be done if I had a bipod. I could, I'd be shooting. And if the beans weren't so tall. This close, but not quite. <sighs> Everything's long gone for tonight. There was some behind me, there was some in front of me, there's some way down that way. Some came out right at me. All I could see was his face. Just not comfortable hitting that kill zone in a headshot with this rifle. And since I'm not comfortable taking that shot, I don't take it. But until tomorrow. The trouble is when you're hunting, you know, 80 acres of beans and the deer can go literally anywhere, it's difficult to get into a pinpoint location where the deer will be. And that was the biggest problem because it was half a mile of beans. Well, by the time you count all the edges, it's more like a good mile of edges that the deer would come out of. And pinpointing that down to, you know, a nice 200, 300 yard area was a lot harder than I kind of anticipated, but I still got deer this way. A couple of things I learned from this tactic is Sometimes the wind out in those fields does funny things. You think it's a wide open field. I'm a good, you know, 100 yards from the edge. I'm going to get a steady wind. And it's really not the case. It, it really kind of swooped and swirled much more than I thought it would. And that was one of the things I learned. It didn't really affect me in this situation, but it's something you, I didn't anticipate. And they did end up sneaking up downwind of me which is, I, I anticipated the fact that I had to stay hiding down in the beans, the deer could sneak up on me.
No deer, but I got another woodchuck. Got an obstacle to get past. What's wrong with all these nozzles? Oh, man. Hmm. Not too bad. Now we wait. So total, this deer damage season, I got six deer. This trip I got three, and the previous episode I got three. My goal was to get 15. If I can get comfortable taking headshots on a deer with my rifle, I could have had 15 deer. I think I had that, I, had, I think I had 20 opportunities probably on taking a headshot at a deer that I did not take because I'm not comfortable hitting it. So the, the difference is, is I mean, the kill zone on a deer is usually, I mean, it's like, it's pretty big. It's pretty forgiving. That's a pretty big thing to try and hit at, you know, 100 yards. It's pretty easy. But the head, the kill zone in a head is like, it's like the size of your palm with maybe a, a neck hanging down. There's a whole lot of nose on a deer and there's a whole lot of ear on a deer. There's a whole lot of jaw and throat that's not kill zone that you're just gonna maim a deer. And that's, that's why I'm, reluctant to try and hit this area at a hundred yard shot versus the usual kill zone on a deer. Now, now if I had a, a buck shot, 50 yard shot, I, I'd take that shot every day. You're gonna kill it. It's, it's, that'd be easy to hit with buck shot, but a single rifle bullet, I, I'd like to say I'm that good, but unfortunately I'm not. And if I can get, practice up and get good enough to where I think I can hit that consistently, I will definitely start taking those shots, but more likely than not, I'm going to adjust my strategy and get more locations to hunt. It's difficult. I want to put a shack elevated out in the middle of the beans, but that's difficult because the pivot has to come through, the sprayer has to come through, and I've got to have, have the logistics to drive it out there without mashing down more crops because the crops are what I'm trying to save anyway. So getting good elevated hunting shack spots would pay off more than trying to shoot in the, head, in the head. I think it would pay to switch to buckshot and closer range shots and then try to get some better hunting spots set up just for deer damage because the hunting spots you use in the fall are not the hunting spots you use deer damage. You can sometimes, but the deer just spread out too much and I covered that in the last episode. But next year I do hope to improve. I, I think knowing what I know now, Switching to buckshot in certain circumstances will pay off so I can get those headshots and a little bit more time into getting elevated hunting locations to shoot down to get a better angle at the vitals when they're standing in the beans. So I, I actually look forward to next year and I actually look forward to this fall too. Tons more hunting to come. 
because I, I hope you have as much fun hunting as I have. It's a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun. I wouldn't do it if I didn't enjoy it. So I'm glad you enjoy it with us. As always, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. And leave us a comment. We like to hear what you think. Sometimes you guys have lots of good things to say. And it's always encouraging to hear an encouraging word. Until next time, get them big bucks in the field out. Don't worry, I'll leave you alone. I just wanna. You move so weird.